Bam! Fuck a title show three. Uh, watching the UFC fights. It is the Almeida versus Garbrandt card right now. The first fight is about to start. Josh Berkman versus Paul Felder. Josh Berkman, fuck, absolute veteran. Tough as shit, too. But, uh, yeah. As always, I'm your host, Juvie the Kid. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you guys know it. At Juvie the Kid, J U V Y T H A K I D. Shazam. As always, well, for the last episode, and probably what's going to end up being the format, because I need someone to help me with this shit, is Nikki. Yeah. Make sure you speak up, though. I will. I'm not fancy enough to have, like, a bunch of microphones. <laughs> You're not that fancy of a girl? Not yet. Not yet. You will be. I will be. So, uh, recently in uh, <laughs> Toronto, Ontario, there was a huge... Uh, medicinal marijuana dispensary raid and you know, everyone was freaking out I didn't agree with it but some new information kind of came to light and uh, although like I think it's dumb we have like rules and regulations or whatever for like marijuana or weed whatever you want to call it I just whatever I think it's silly like I guess that rules are rules sometimes in society and so what were what was everything that happened like? So what had happened is May eighteenth, um, the city had sent out letters to forty three dispensaries in Toronto, um, pretty much asking them to cease and desist, like letting them know that they're not within the rules and regulations. Um, dispensaries are illegal currently, um, mm -hmm. hopefully not for much longer, um, but that they're interfering with zoning bylaws as well. Um, and that if they did not, they had until Saturday to stop. Because a lot of them are also, like, too close to school zones. Yeah, they're too close to school zones. That's one of the big concerns. And there are no federal regulations. It's mm -hmm. something that they're planning to come out with in early 2017. So it's still a gray area. Yeah. And, but they did assure... Um, people that they will still be able to get their medical marijuana. They just have to go about it through the legal process, which is through licensed producers, which yeah. they sign up for when they get their green card. It is in every piece of paper that they sign. Okay, well, then that's kind of understandable then. Like, if it says, like, hey, you got to go to this licensed producer, whatever, and you're going to, like, somebody else, then, like, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, going against what you signed up for. The downfall Ooh, of, the, of the LPs is it is more expensive. You are usually, a lot of LPs do charge more than street value. LP is licensed producer. Sorry. That it's being just... said, um, it is medical grade marijuana. Another yeah. issue that um, the city and the country has about medical marijuana is there's no way to determine which dispensary and which strain has what THC level. Yeah. They need to find the balance. So certain people, let's say, um, with cancer, they would have a certain strain for them. Yeah, for sure. Someone else who has depression, they may have a, a smaller strain, so to speak, for lack of a better word. And licensed producers, like, don't have the differentiation, like, of them for the people, or...? It, it's more what the strain kind of comes to be, comes to be for a lot of them, I mm -hmm. found. Um... I can only base that off where, you know, I was at that time. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's because it's grown so different. Each strain has a different amount. There's so many factors. And it's, um, but with licensed producers, you do usually submit to urinary samples every couple months. Yeah, um, to make you're not, sure you're using the product at least. If you're not taking the amount you should have in your system based on your prescription, then they do reduce your prescription amount which does suck for a lot of people, but it's their way of trying to make sure you do not sell it on the street. Which makes sense. So I get that. They, the LPs have federal rules and regulations. That's why they are legal. They go through a lot of paperwork. It can take them over a year to even become licensed. So yeah, it, all right. It's a lot. So I mean, you're, the dispensaries, they're cheaper, they're easier. It's a storefront you can go to. It's a lot more personal. Yeah. I can totally appreciate that, but I can see why LPs are upset because it is taking away from their legitimate. Yeah, a hundred percent. I totally see that if that's how it's kind of like been in, like instated, like as like to this point at least. And it's like 
if they had like fair warning like hey you guys got to stop this or like we got to like take the precautions like we need to like we're gonna have to send our raid guys in to shut you down mm -hmm. like if they knew that ahead of time because they are going against the rules then that's kind of their fault well and, and they sent that out um a full week and one day it was eight days before they did the raid that they sent it out mm -hmm. um clearly they did not stop by saturday as you know i mean Let's be honest, were any of them really going to shut down? Oh, this no, is, they probably they... thought they were bluffing. Oh. I mean, it's like when you get a cease and desist letter from pirating a movie on the internet. You're yeah. going to ignore that shit and continue on with your day. Yeah, fair enough. As long enough. as you got good lawyers, you know, whatever. And most dispensaries can afford it, let's, let's be honest. Yeah, I at the same time, like, if it's near schools and shit, like, mm -hmm. I get that. Like, I, I don't know, I don't necessarily agree with that. That's where I can see it from both sides of the coin. From the dispensary point of view and from customers of dispensaries, I'd be pretty pissed too. But if you don't have all the information... Yeah. I mean, it's like more information is coming out. A lot of people assumed the cops were being dicks. Well, that's, that's what I thought because they, that's what happened in California because, like, in, cert, like, in a way, it was, like... For medicinal patients, it was legal, but like for the, it's it's like the same situation pretty much. Mhm. Mm no, for sure. Um, it is kind of shitty that they did arrest ninety people, and there's been two hundred and fifty seven charges laid, more than two hundred and fifty seven charges laid, after they conducted the raids of forty three that they were targeting, of the eighty three dispensaries in Toronto alone. Jesus. Um, man. Now in Barrie, there are several dispensaries. One just popped up a couple days ago, and they yeah. seem to just be popping up here, there, and everywhere. Well, everyone's trying to make a quick buck. They see it as the market now. Like, you know what I mean? I genuinely feel that there are some people out there who open up dispensaries because not for the profit that could come from it, but to legitimately help people that, that need it. There's, yeah. I mean, look at all the studies. Look at the wonders it does for kids with seizures, the cannabinoid oil. Okay, so let me see what happened here, because somebody got rocked, and I didn't see... Oh! Josh Berkman got caught Felder with a good left hand. That, yeah, I was trying to remember who he was, and I couldn't remember. He was on uh, Ultimate Fighter back in the day. See, this is the exchange. Oh, I okay, I didn't he like did him, catch him. he seemed like a douche. Yeah. He... Berkman's getting the better of him in those exchanges, for sure. And then the vet... He just goes right for the sing or the double legged. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he yeah. does look like his. He's toned the a bit differently the now. The one DVD I have, he's on it. I believe it's when he fought Jake Ellenberger, and he's went. Jake Ellenberger's like, I'm not worried about his jujitsu. Jujitsu is a waste of time because this was like, the, during like when wrestlers were dominating in a way, mm -hmm. and Berkman uh, submitted him with a guillotine first round. Holy crap. Yeah, I believe it was a guillotine. If not, it was rear naked. I know it was a choke of some kind, though. Another thing I wanted to point out is how many kilos they confiscated oh, yeah. of dried marijuana. That's intense. And, I mean, to be expected, 270 kilos. And there's like 30 kilos of resin, 142 of cookies. There's drinks. There's other byproducts. 121 kilos of other marijuana byproducts. They can't even tell you what ones they are but what's shocking is that $160,000 in cash yeah, you know I could see that a... but 32 grams of powdered cocaine at one location yeah those are the dispensaries that give the really good ones a horrible name someone's trying to do a little skiing if you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> trying to get up with the angels <laughs> so for when you look at that I can again I can totally understand the, the city official side of it. Yeah. But it does suck for the people who do rely on this medicine. <laughs> Let's eat some weed brownies and do some lines. Trust me. It'll be the best high we ever had. Instead of icing sugar, it's just <laughs> powder of the... I didn't, know we, I didn't know we started putting icing sugar on our edibles. Oh, yeah, it's just something I concocted for everybody. No worries. They'll love it. You feel real fucking good after this, boys. <laughs> Feeling real nice. <laughs> Second round, 3.10 on the clock. On a brighter side of things, the UFC Reebok uniform. Yeah, actually, I was just going to ask you about this, because, like, so, like, they changed it or whatever, so the guys can't have a bunch of sponsors 
on their shorts because Reebok is like the exclusive sponsor for mm. them. So, so far it's pretty much only black with white stripe or white with black. But they have all the same shorts. Like Josh Berkman has the split Muay Thai type shorts. Mm -hmm. And uh, Felder's wearing what you call hot pants. Well, and the only, di the only difference is if you were the champ, you get black with gold. Mm -hmm. the so far the only custom ones we've really seen is when McGregor fought Aldo and he had his, Ir his Irish green ones as the contender. I so, loved those, I, just saying. Like, I don't know when the fuck someone was like, hey, w ooh, good spinning elbow by Berkman. Everyone's like, hey, what colors can we do? Red and blue to match the corners? Nah, let's do black and then white. So when they're scooting around on the dirty canvas and blood, it's going to look like they shit themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> so. Well, now there's a total of seven combinations that they're looking to come out with. They want to add more color. An injunction of color words there on the screen yeah and so they got green ones blue ones Do yellow they have a picture red. Of them? yeah right here oh sweet you see? this is the leaked photo that was put on that site so this is also like a concept thing too so this might change a bit like they who knows they might mm -hmm. change the design of the stripe or something Berkman holding Felder on the cage, going for takedown. They also down. wanted to appeal to female fight fighters like Ronda well, Rousey, yeah. Holly Holmes. And f Ronda Rousey's not coming back, people. And if she does, I don't know. It's not going to be for a long time. I don't see it happening. She just signed on for three movies. I think when they initiated it, they had her in mind. Um, yeah. But I mean, but like Holly Holmes, Misha Tate. Yeah. People are going to... You know, want so to this, see what she comes up with, I guess. Yeah, so that's cool. They got red, yellow, royal, which is pretty much blue, I guess. Now, the, there and is a comment green. on this page about it reminding them of Mortal Kombat. I totally see it. I see it, but that's dope because I love Mortal Kombat. <laughs> so I'm down. Like, I see it in the yellow, but, the red, and the blue. But that's cool, though, because, sure. like, even if guys want to, the red corner can have the red outfit, the blue corner can have the blue outfit. But guys like Anderson Silva, who have been notorious for wearing black and yellow trunks his, like, his whole career pretty much, get the fly. I think it was because she was chasing the fly. Miss Kaiju. Um, Anderson Silva's wear, worn black and yellow is pretty much his whole career. He can wear those again, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's cool that they have green for like other guys, like... I think that'll be really cool. They also why tailored... they call white chalk? Like, why couldn't you just say black white? Because it, it's a specific color of white. It's like yeah. egg white or off white or ivory. It's all white. Yeah, but it's that's different true. variants of it. That's true. Because people want to be assholes about it. But that's cool. So at least like it's gonna be not just like black and white. Cause like the fighters are look more professional now. Like it, mm -hmm. I, I see that. But now the the canvas itself looks like NASCAR. It's like what, yeah. like where can we put a sponsor? Over here, over here, and over here, like. No, I definitely. You know what? It also makes me think of the Power Rangers just because of the colors. Yeah, that's pretty sweet too. That that really <laughs> is. Better than looking like Transformers or. Yeah, I guess. Stupid. Well, I don't know. Cause it would like, be pretty cool to show up as Optimus Prime. Yeah. Oh, Miss Kaiju's getting riled up. So I will be right back. Apparently, I didn't really need to pause it. She came right back in. Very defensive. <laughs> Calm down. Sorry for anybody who's listening with headphones on that one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, you did good. You protected the yard. <laughs> Third round, Berkman Felder. Oh, it's in the third well, round already. Okay, we're going to get her calmed down, and I will be right back. Come here. Okay. Show's back on, Kaiju. You get your bone. Go relax. Jeez. Any more? Um, did they say when they're planning to announce, like, or debut those new outfits? Like, the new colors? Like, $199, 200 whatever? Uh, no. They were playing around with the idea, I believe, of having... Or they initially, when they first came out with just the Soul Reebok ones... They were playing with, um, like, certain tiers would have one color. Like, uh, champions would have, like, gold. Well, and... yeah, that's how they do it now. And, um, so I think they're sticking with that. Hmm. And then, um, for, like, <laughs> Conor McGregor, for example, people like him, who well, pretty he's much probably bring all... in a shit ton of money. Well, he's the first one that came in with a different color trunk, because when he fought Aldo, he had green with a black stripe. Yeah. 
And that's, again, what they're showing here is green to black straight, too. Yeah. They're also trying to make it more female-friendly, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, I'm sure some like girls... Like, cuts of them. Oh, okay, well, that'd be all right, because I'm sure some girls would like, you know, different outfits instead of just, like, sports bra shorts, you know what I mean? Well, the goal is to make it so that, um, like, hopefully people would be comfortable enough in it yeah. and the athletic wear to train in it as well. True. Well, that's, I don't know, that's Reebok just trying to totally cash in. It's like, I don't know. Well, I think they were making, um... Because when they first did this, they fucked up a lot of stuff. They, like, they had fighters' names spelt wrong and everything. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. I mean, it's not hard to look at a sheet. 25 leg kick. And if, like, those, if those leg kicks landed at, like, square or, like, in the right spot, like, those hurt. Those accumulate for sure. Even two good ones can change the course of a fight. Like, it can make your knee twist in a certain way. Like, I get kicked in the shin by a toddler and I'm ready <laughs> to cry. Like, I will drop like a sack of taters. Oh, yeah. I'd step into the <laughs> ring, see them like walking towards me, even well, nicely shake my hand, and I turtle <laughs> and cry. Well, that's worse because they're wearing shoes, so it's harder. Like,. But well, no. no, with this, what ha what hurts more is when you're, like, if you're going to throw a leg kick and they go to throw at the same time and it's just shin on shin, like, that sucks. And Brent that's, like... has got cuts on his shins. Like, huh? over by his feet. Like, on his feet. Oh. I see the one oh, no, there. He's, no, I think that's coming from his uh, nose there. His, Berkman's nose is bloody. He's got a no, cut on the bridge. And, he's got a cut on the bridge and it's bleeding out of the nostril. Is the other guy bleeding at all? Uh, no. Aww. But Ber Berkman's a vet. He's been in some fucking wars. Like, he has a lot of fights under his belt. You know what would worry me about stepping into the ring? And I don't know if any oh, of these fighters lot. get oh, worried. Oh, he might have a... He might, it might be broken. That's a lot of blood. I hope he's fine. Walk it off. Just shake it off. You're good. Oh, yeah. It's broken. You can see it's all crooked. <laughs> shake yeah, it off, it buddy. Take a lap. just a little bit to the right. He just needs to hang up... Larry there with his nose and he'll be fine but one thing I don't know if any fighter has ever really thought about if they were concerned but tattoos what if you get your tattoo cut and it ends up getting deformed because of scar tissue does that not these guys worry you okay well some guys um, that might be their concern but those are the guys who are not meant to be in the fight game fair though like other guys who are just I do this because I would like to fight Mm -hmm. Oh, it goes all three rounds, Berkman. Do you think there's ever... From what I saw, I could give it to Berkman. He got takedowns, and he was getting the better exchanges. Oh, God, he got his poor nose. honker. Oh, I want to see... I wonder what did that. It might have been... Felder's a... face looks a bit uh, oh, lumpy, an... too. Oh, an elbow. No, he was already bleeding at that point. That might have made it worse, though. That might not have been what broke it. He zigged, Felder zagged, and... Well, he was Bad had him, Felder had him on the cage in the clench, and he threw that short elbow. And John Jones is fucking... He's one of the best at it. Mm -hmm. He staggers, guys, because he plays the hand game where he gets them to put their hands, like, out and, like, touch his. And he just snaps it, like, with Rashad Evans. He, he knocked him back, made him take a knee and everything, because it was just, like, fucking crack! Oh, gone Queer Street. On oh, Queer Street. Yeah, I could not. Mm -mm. <laughs> I couldn't step into that. I doubt I could physically be there if a loved one was in that. <laughs> nope. I'd be the one screaming like a banshee, freaking out. It's actually... Total mom mode. Certain fights, you can tell when the fighters' wives are there. Because you can hear them freaking out. Yeah, I, I couldn't put anybody through that. Even a friend... I couldn't do that to them because if they lose yeah. concentration and like well, that's they get why fucked up, I'm gonna feel like a bag of shit. I'm gonna be that asshole <laughs> that fucked it for everybody. Yeah, I didn't know it happened. Third round, <laughs> I felt fine. And I kept hearing someone scream my name in this piercing like <laughs> tone and like Jonah Hill next... in accepted piercing. <laughs> next there, no, oh, I saw a shin coming at me, and the fight was over. So yeah, I was cheering you on oh i wouldn't <laughs> even 
take that blame. I pin it on somebody else. Sure, I yeah, I, don't know. I like, heard that too. That was some bitch behind me. Yeah, I You're would just totally, outside. Calm your teats. Totally not front up to that. No. <laughs> no, I couldn't take the blame either. <laughs> I mean, it, like, I don't think I could, like, really do that to you. I think you would know if it was me or not. Probably. Uh, and oh, let's see. I can't lie very well. Oh, out. see, his nose is fine. He'll be all right. It's just a bit off center. Who likes being symmetrical, anyways? Unanimous decision for Paul Felder. That wow. is surprising. I thought Berkman had it. Yeah, well, I wasn't paying close enough attention. Well, I've to only him. seen bits and pieces, too, but he's the only one I knew, so maybe I'm just biased. <laughs> From what I saw, it looked like Berkman was getting the better of him, but I missed, like, uh, all pretty much all of round two. <laughs> a now, are his up, eyebrows swollen, or is that naturally? I'm talking about Felder, but... Some people, some people have that, like, caveman-like eyebrow, like... Where it's protruded a bit? It's weird, I know. Or maybe it's like the equivalent of cauliflower ear, but on like your eyebrows. Nah, some people just, that's the way it, like their skull goes or whatever, too. That's intense. No, when you see guys get the scar tissue around their eyes, it's like Nick Diaz before he got it all shaved down. It's when it, you see the skin like sagging down a bit. It makes it a lot easier to get cut there, too. So a lot of guys, what they did, well, what Nick Diaz did, at least, he got the scar tissue removed. And then he actually got his orbital bone and everything shaved down so it wasn't as sharp and it wouldn't cut him as bad when he got hit. Well, that's kind of smart. Yeah. Because the first guy that I heard doing it back in the day was Marcus, uh, this fighter Marcus Davis. And, um, yeah, he had a lot of scar tissue all around his eyes. He'd get cut, like, every single fight. And then he got a lot of it, like, shaved down and removed. And then Vanderlei Silva did it, but then he got a total fucking different face. Like, it looks like he got a facelift, and he got, like, his nose, like, widened and everything so he could, like, breathe better, but he, they put, like, a piece of cartilage so it was actually, like, bigger, like, outweighs. I can't believe I just assumed all Silvas were related. Yeah, but like <laughs> you'd be surprised. I don't think you, I don't know, it's, it's not surprising how many people have actually asked me that. <laughs> like, I just assumed they were brothers or cousins or, nope. All right, well, if the move of the fight was him catching a kick and throwing a minor return there, maybe it wasn't that great of a fight, then. Yeah, looking back on the replay, they're not really painting him in good light. Well, they got a good right hand there. This is the elbow that got him. That's a good elbow, for sure. If you can throw those correct, then that's it's really good. A lot of douchebags, though, like, at the bar thing, they can throw them, and they get this weird, like, chicken wing kind of thing going on, where their <laughs> elbows are just kind of, like completely horizontal and they're just like wiggling their body in it like how many you fight sometimes <laughs> kind of <laughs> this will be a good fight Masvidal versus Lorenz Larkin why did you say his name like that it's like when I say oranges you don't I just say felt, it right I just felt like saying it, adding emphasis how do you say oranges oh the oranges <laughs> oh, some oranges use. Oh, I love it Look at his hair, it's stylish. It's an uneven flat top, sir. That is a bold move. Cody Garvin. That is a bold move. Getting that big piece on your neck oh, like a yeah. savage. That's a dope tattoo. But no, uh, Cody Garbrandt, he's fighting Almeida. They're both undefeated. Garbrandt, 8 0. Almeida, I believe, is 21 0. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing with that is, I give it to Garbrandt because Almeida might have reach on him, but. Yeah. I think Garbrandt has more power in his strikes, and Alme Almeida, when he gets into the, like, t his name's Thomas Almeida, just so no one's like, oh, you don't even know their first name. So, like, Thomas Almeida, when he gets into exchanges, he he tends to get hit as well, especially in his fight with Brad Pickett. Mm -hmm. He won it by, with a flying knee, but he looked like, after the first round, he looked like he just got out of a five-round fucking war. Like, his face was bloody. And um, with the, uh, going against a guy like Garbrandt, who actually, he has a lot of power in his punches, mm -hmm. I think it might be a tough night for him. Because uh, Brad Pickett, I believe he rocked him three times. I know he dropped him twice, but it might have been three times, if I remember correctly. So, I don't know. What did you stumble upon that has your ears so pressed? This is weird news. I know some of these websites are just completely trash, 
nothing true at all. Okay. But I was thinking of a fun game we could play. Is mm. it believable or is it just downright fucking stupid? Alright. So, <laughs> this was updated uh, today, actually, which is even better. So, apparently... A stoned man called the cops after mistaking a dog bite for a gunshot wound. That's bullshit. Unless that... It depends what he's stoned on, though. I was going to say, well, usually when people say stoned, like, they think of, like, weed right away. That's what I think of. If he's yeah. stoned on weed, then unless that dog, like, was able to bite down, take a fucking chunk out of him, I, like, I don't know. No fucking way. See, if... I've watched so much Breaking Bad the last several days that I automatically think of meth when someone says stoned. No, when you say high, I think of. <laughs> well, I, like, if someone says, like, oh, that kid was stoned, I'm like, leave him alone. You want to smoke a little weed? Leave him alone. If someone says, oh, shit, that guy was high, right away I'm like, what was he high on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like my attention, I'm just like, oh, my God, what was he high on? Meth? <laughs> like, crack? Coke? Heroin? What? <laughs> like, no, just weed. Why don't you just say stoned? It would have been a lot fucking easier. Uh, this guy resides in Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. The police department received, or, uh, released a statement on Thursday um, about uh, the rumor concerning a reported shooting. And so he offered the explanation that it, in fact, was a dog bite um, that bit Buddy on the ass. <laughs> Um, makes you think of Forrest Gump, doesn't it? This actually happened? <laughs> yeah, this actually happened. Um, what Chief a fucking Henson idiot. from the Grosbeck Police Department released a statement. Um, 6.4 thousand shares of that statement. It's just going through. It's been, yeah. What a fucking idiot. The man had been smoking marijuana, he called it, on the porch when a thunderstorm passed over. His dog spooked and bit him on the ass. So it's like the impact, but like, see, that's what I don't understand, because like, one, how sharp are your fucking te dog's teeth? Two, like, how powerful is your dog's bite? Because the amount of time it would have took for it to, like, rep the thunder or something to replicate a gunshot, and that dog, that dog would have to, like, were you sitting naked on your fucking porch, and your dog was just like, hey, there's an ass. <laughs> or the, like, the thunder and lightning hit, he's like, oh, fuck. Bang. <laughs> like, some dogs get spooked by it. I totally get it. I've Not never seen a dog is. get spooked and then just try and jump at somebody. He's like, ass. Well, like, he could have been walking away, maybe. And I still, don't know. what the fuck? Did he just, like, bite through his fucking shorts, like, and everything? Like, this story doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> What's even better is a 75 year old woman died. Her family used winking love, face emojis. I love how you say, it. What's even better? A 79 year old woman died. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's what her family did oh. that is even better. So they used winking face emojis to announce the death of this woman. <laughs> Grandma's dead, wink. And that's apparently how she wanted it. Um, Maybe it was She a... told her children that when she died, she wanted to be remembered in... Um, Maybe you can pronounce this. Uh, El Piradico de Cantalunya. That was the whitest pronounce pronunciation of any, like, Spanish type thing. Uh, I apologize for murdering that. She wanted to be remembered with her favorite symbol. Uh, after she died at her home in Barcelona, uh, on Friday, her offspring <laughs> uh, immediately put her plan into action. So it even shows the clipping here. It's in Spanish. I don't think I'm we should try to that. read it. I'm not going to do that. But no. she died on the 27th. <laughs> um, they got right to it, and bam, right there, winky emoji in the newspaper. Oh, so they didn't, put a, the they didn't put a picture of her? They put the emoji there. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the winking emoji, They wanted. she wanted to be remembered in like a fun way. So, I mean, kind of sweet. Oh, and for anybody that's like, well, what one was it? it? Get the WhatsApp app, and it's the winky face and that. Tongue sticking out, big yeah. eyeball. That's kind of cute. Maybe she just thought that face was the cutest one, or she thought it was funny, so that's what she wanted. It's kind of cute, <clears> but, <throat> I mean, imagine just stumbling upon that in a newspaper. Like, yeah. not having an explanation. This is sad. A gorilla was shot dead. After grabbing the I seen boy, this video. I seen this video today. So the kid had fallen into the gorilla exhibit, 
It was mm-hmm. sitting in like the river part, and the gorilla comes up, and he's like, he's not even like vicious or like aggressive. He's actually he's kind of like checking it out, like grabbing its hand, looking at it, and he grabbed the kid and like went up the river to I think where it was more shallow. You couldn't really see from mm-hmm. the camera angle, but everybody's just fucking freaking out, and like it just losing it like oh my god it's got the baby it's gonna kill it and i'm sitting there going like man that gorilla is really calm like it's actually like it's bringing it up away from like where it might like from away from the hill like on the river so it won't get washed down or something maybe like it's bringing Mm -hmm. it to a safer area and everyone else is fucking losing their shit goddamn white people this for that was only 17 years old that's so sad that wait the what the gorilla was only 17 oh yeah. That's a young gorilla, yeah, in my opinion. Is. I'm unclear as to how long they can live for, but they know. are big, lovable, fluffy bastards that would cuddle you all night long. No, oh, I want a gorilla, but I will never be able to safely have one, probably. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, we'd have to have its own room for it, like its own enclosure that you oh. could go in and hang out with it, maybe set yeah. up a TV, play some PlayStation, but... um. Yeah, no, I don't feel comfortable going to the bathroom and have a gorilla just hanging around the house. Yeah. What if it feels threatened threatened and comes and attacks me while I'm on the pooper, for lack of a better word? That's going to suck. Or if you're in the middle of it... Well, then it's going to be a messy fight. <laughs> Ew. Fuck that. So gross. So apparently the... Uh, the Dangerous Animal Response Team... Who killed uh, Harambi, I believe was the gorilla's name. Cute name. Um, it, it was done after they debated their tactics. I think they were just too much of a pussy to go approach the, the fluffy beast. He was gentler than I think people give him credit for. I guarantee he was. Um, I don't know why he wasn't trank. Um, I don't know. That would have been safer. Probably had some fucking crazy white lady that's all on a gluten-free diet screaming in his ear to fucking shoot him. Well, I guess they, like, they said it would have taken a few minutes had they had tranked him. Um, and that wasn't a risk they were willing to take. I understand it's a four-year-old. I completely understand that. But, um, oh, gorillas live to be about 35, according to World Wildlife Fund. So he's and they reach maturity uh, between the ages of 10 and 14. So he literally had... He had a long time time to go. Oh, yeah. He had... That's fucked up. He had a long time. That's horrible. Yeah. It's fucked up, though, because people... Like, we've grown into this weird thing where we go to zoos to, like, look at the animals. We're like, oh, look at the cute gorillas. Look at the cute tigers. And we forget that these things are animals at the end of the day. Like, And I don't mean that... Yeah, and I don't mean that in the in a bad way Mm -hmm. but you can't sit there bring a bunch of kids into a fucking tiger cage and be like okay kids hold out your hands with kitty treats and not expect (laughs) one of the fucking kids temptations exactly i'm just saying (laughs) like not expect to like get somebody bit you know what i mean like at the end of the day these are fucking animals you're putting them in these weird like fucking isolated things they're probably getting like mad anxious and like cabin fever they're like as soon as that little chubby kid falls <laughs> he's fucking mine his ass is rah. pretty much like the tigers are walking around <laughs> waiting for him like um that movie we watched earlier today they said it that guy said it perfectly the guy who played oh, porn preservation on, yeah um how lions will kill for food gorillas will kill in well, defense, yeah. and humans are the only ones who kill in pleasure and at the same time not true. Well, you believe dolphins are sadistic They are bastards. fucked. But no, he, no, because wolves will run up and just fucking jack a buffalo or a deer or some shit just because. Or, like, just to show, like, the pack or whatever. Like, don't, I said, I could fucking get this. Don't worry. Like, and they'll kill the thing and walk away from it. But you know what? I can completely understand that. I mean... The only difference, like, when it comes to killing between us and animals is we have a voice to use our big people words, and we're just dicks. Pretty much. Like, we're just all at dicks. We don't need to kill people to eat. We have literally no reason to kill somebody. No. And yet we do it because we're all evil, sadistic assholes. Deep down, everybody has thought about killing somebody. Okay, yeah. Right or wrong. 
Hold on, folks. All right, we're back. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Woo! Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things, though. It's like, also, like, what does, like, what does, this, like, murder get classified as? Because some people believe that the, like, assisted suicide or whatever, like, are mur those people are murderers or whatever. I don't believe that. No, I'm just, I mean, like, a lot of people do, though. Mm -hmm. And, like, at the same time, like, <laughs> there's people who will, like, try and debate about hunting or certain things like that, but then they don't actually think about, like, the fucking deer and elk or whatever fighting each other and stabbing the shit out of each other with these antlers. Like, if, like, humans don't kill them, like, they're gonna kill each other. Or, they're gonna overpopulate an area and fuck it up. Well, that's and that's a proven fact. Like, that fucking season. happens. Like... No, I, I totally get it. I 100% <clears throat> agree with assisting someone with wanting to pass on if you're ready to go and you are not physically capable of doing it yeah then absolutely well one thing i've always kind of said is like you know people are always like oh it wasn't his time to go it wasn't her time to go well if it's their time isn't it their like isn't it their right to decide like mm -hmm. i get it if somebody is like terminally ill or whatever i get that but at the same time, like, some people, they just kind of, like, they feel like they're done. Like, they've achieved what they can achieve. And for some reason, they don't feel like there's any more that they're going to. Like, they're fulfilled and everything. And they could be a lot younger. And people will have an issue with that. But it's his time or her time. You know what I mean? Like, they can decide when they can go. What really kind of ticks me off about it is there is various religious people from various different religions... Yeah. Um, that do believe that suicide is a sin and do believe that assisted suicide essentially is a huge sin that brings yeah. to hell. Pretty much like an accomplice to the sin. <laughs> yeah, and just, you know, and even like with insurance. Like if you commit suicide, your insurance is null and void. Yeah. That's kind of a dick move too. Yeah, that's kind of... I mean, in the grand scheme of things, because so many people, the reason why they have insurance isn't for themselves. So they take care, care of less. They when they kick buckets, you can't go after them for their debt. Yeah. Who fucking cares? It's their families that these people go after. So well, they want yeah. their families, like, or they want their debt taken care of so their families don't have that burden. No, I feel you. It, but it's... No, it's kind of... But insurance companies are fucked, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they... Like, every co insurance company has a million loopholes so they don't have to pay you or they don't have to pay a certain, like, the full extent or whatever have you. You know what I mean? Well, look how much I pay a month for insurance. It's not cheap. Granted, the benefits are, are pretty good for what yeah. they are. But if something seriously happens to me... No bueno. No bueno. I mean, like, it... <laughs> no way. Yeah. Like if they don't think it's an accidental death, like if they think I did it myself, like I'm the asshole that tripped <laughs> up a step out of negligence and cracked my face and killed myself. I don't know if they deem that suicide. Like I was just an asshole that did that. Very unrealistic, I know, <laughs> but for lack of a better analogy, I don't know what. To get, to get off the new the topic of capping yourself with a staircase. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on with Lorenz Larkin's hair right now. <laughs> He's got a belt. Ooh, good right hand by Masvidal. He's got like a kind of flat top angle going on, and then it goes into like a weird snake thing at the back. But then he has like a Liberty Bell thing, but it's got like the whole like frame that would be holding the bell. I don't understand. Like it looks like a church bell, and they, the bell at the side of the ring is more like a school bell kind of thing. Ooh, good leg kick by Mastodal. On a brighter note, this is pretty fucked up for some people, I guess. So there is, uh, in Beijing, an <laughs> S&M restaurant. Kaiju! And apparently it's a huge hit with customers. So if you feel like being <laughs> served by a bunch of waiters and waitresses with um, strap-ons and... Or mannequins girl. with huge fake boobs, this and that. That is the place for you. And you can get lobster. Hey, what's up? Let me get the bacon cheeseburger. And uh, is the table with the big black dick seats available? It is? Awesome. Thank you. Well, and you get to drink out of penis and booby They have pictures. Mugs. This is. They have pictures. This is great. 
That is, look at that shading work on that penis that right is, there. That's all right. That's beautifully done. Owner Lulu, a 27-year-old divorcee, said business has been good since opening just under a year ago, with young Chinese streaming in to feast on seafood such as lobster under the gaze of mannequins wearing bondage gear. Back up. They got some whips. This one looks like a fly swatter. That one's kind of different. You don't see that every day. It's like a mix of a fly swatter and fucking spatula. Now those bibs don't even look natural. They are way too far down. Yeah, it's at like the bottom of the rib cage. So it's on an apron. That's kind of... Of course, it's some white dude, like, chilling there with his mouth on one of them. Oh, absolutely. Are you God telling me it. if you weren't in Beijing? You... Look at that. That is a sexy mannequin. See, like, the fucked up thing is... <laughs> there's so many fucking pictures of, like, that, like... A white dude with his, like, mouth on a titty that probably a million people have walked by with their greasy hands and touched or some weird shit after touching their dick. Mm -hmm. And they'll fucking go and try and hug a shark, but they're like, ooh, that has gluten in it? I don't, I can't have gluten. I don't eat gluten. I'm sorry. Like, oh, do you, are you, can you not have it? No, I just don't eat it. Oh, but you'll go hug a fucking shark? All right, cool, bud. Like, I think you need to figure your fucking life out, mate. <laughs> I love this kit that you get. Look at that. Bam. Is that a surgical glove with a condom and chopsticks? That is 100%. Makes me wonder what, what you're like. doing with the chopsticks now. Now it's written in Chinese, so I mean, it could be a wet uh, nap. I could use a chopstick to put on condom. I'm very see, skilled. It's, it's got napkins. <coughs> oh. This this could be lube right here. This little black packet could be lube. What happened? Masvidal's down and hitting the mat. He's pissed about something. They're oh. draft pulls or penises. Oh my god. I know. Oh, is eye poke or junk? Oh. oh, he got fucking. He got his finger right in there. I fucking hate that. Oh my god. Hopefully his eye's not fucked up from that. But right away, sense. Larkin knew that he hit him. He got him in the eye, too, though. See, like, the way those, the MMA gloves are, they kind of force your hand to stay out a bit. Mm hmm. So, like, it's always a fucking, like, risk of it, like, unless a guy can keep his hands shut mm -hmm. or whatever. If they can make a glove that's a little bit just more curved, so the fingers are like more down or something, mm -hmm. but still have the mobility for the grappling of ju and jujitsu, yeah, then that'd be perfect. But fuck, like this happens so often. Anthony, uh. jo yeah, Anthony Johnson, he fucking one of my favorite fighters for a long time. Um, he had a fucking a fight ended because he. Like, the eye poke was so intense, it fucked his eye up. That's so Fox. The last random... So I, he, he's sitting there saying, like, I want to continue. Your eyeball must be burning right now. Oh, it's worse when you get blood in it. Like, because, like, sweat's kind of salty, so it's, it stings, but blood... It's like you have oil, because, like, you're just wiping it away, and there's, like, a film on your eye that you just can't get rid of. Like, things go up, get all blurry for a bit. Like, you're always squinting, like, blinking and shit. I get that. You are breathing too. right at the microphone, you know that? <laughs> what does she see? Oh, you see a fly or something? Oh, it's a mosquito. <laughs> oh. On the roof. For the ceiling, my bad. No, it's not actually that loud. They might only hear it a little bit. <laughs> um, I totally gapped on what I was going to say, but the last little current fact yeah. that is fucked up of the day, this guy removed all of his teeth to beat a record for most straws in his mouth. This guy holds 20 world records. For one, he's from New Delhi, New Delhi. New I'm Delhi. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> so he's obsessed with setting Guinness World Records, got 366 flags tattooed on his body. Oh had all God. of his teeth removed so he could put nearly 500 drinking straws and more than 50 burning candles in his mouth. All right. Mr. Rishi, who claims to have set more than 20 records, now calls himself Guinness Rishi. See, the best thing about shit like this, though, is 
Like, when people are like, oh, oh my god, he looks like a freak. Oh, see, he only did, like, tiny little flags all over him. Well, he had to get a couple hundred, though. Yeah. But no, see, like, when people say, like, oh, like, like they claim to have this, mm -hmm. you can't just claim that stuff, because, like, Guinness World Records has, like, the archives and all that, I, well, I think. They mm -hmm. should have some. So you Absolutely. Should, yeah, you should be able to go through and see, like, okay, he has this many. You know what I mean? He rode a scooter for a thousand and one hours. What kind of scooter was it? Was it a kick scooter? Like one of them Razor things? A kid's ride? Well, this was in 1990, and it was with two friends. I mean, this is 25 years ago. This mm. was his first Guinness World Record. True. Um, I guess he really wanted his name in the book, but he did some bizarre things, including delivering a pizza from New Delhi to San Francisco. Oh my yeah, God. that pizza was probably disgusting, I imagine. 100%. Engulping a bottle of tomato ketchup in less than four minutes. For sure keep that moldy pepperoni to yourself, <laughs> bud. Um, I imagine he puked from drinking that ketchup, and the acidity that would have come up his mouth, oh my goodness. But like, see, oh, he got, believe it or not, tattooed on his head. What? Oh, the Ripley's, yeah. Yeah. So maybe he's part of it too. Uh, he got his family involved. World's shortest will, all to son. That's all it says. Okay, we're gonna go over the readings. All to son. Did we have any sons? <laughs> he has more than 500 tattoos on his body. Uh, the Brom fame, an auto parts manufacturer by profession. Um, the toughest one was stuffing the straws in his mouth. Do they have a picture of all the 496 straws? Do they have uh, a picture of that? Um, I'm hoping so, because that would be interesting. Oh, look, he's got the queen there. And, and a I shitty think that's Obama. Obama. Well, look at the queen. That's not her... No. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you're all hyper. You're like a hyena on Mountain Dew right I now. I know there is one. And I missed it. Watch it. It's probably at the top of this article. There it is. You can see it on that little video of him stuffing him in the suck hole. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> the things people do. I don't know. I sit in front of a camera half the time and talk to people that don't really aren't there until I upload it, I guess. <laughs> you want to play four, four words to ruin a date? Uh, she's actually getting really hyper, so I'm going to end the show so I can go and deal with her. <laughs> until next time. Yeah, this has been Fuck a Title Show 3. Enjoy, peeps.